the Gene Krupa Jazz Quartet. With Eddie Shue on sax. Hal McKinney at the piano. Benny Moten on bass. And the one and only Gene Krupa. Norman J. O'Connor. Gene Krupa was the first drummer in jazz history who became a man that was world-renowned because of his instrumental uh, ability. And he rose to prominence along with Benny Goodman, a wonderful name from that same era. And he remains today one of the most famous drummers of our time. And it's showmanship that once made him, I think, a figure what everyone listened to and, of course, knew that a drummer was much more than just a time man, a timekeeper. And of course, now it's excellent musicianship that makes his name kind of the top man, and he's, of course, known as the ace drummer man of our time. So we're going to do just three tunes, a kind of different in character and feeling, a little thing called Flying Home, then a soft ballad like Moonlight in Vermont, and then an old thing that goes back many years, a little thing called Big Noise from Anetka. G. Thank you. 
these are three of the great tunes that had lots of history and lots of personality attached to them. Flying Home, of course, goes back to the days when the fellow that used to be with this man by the name of Lionel Hampton. And then a girl by the name of Margaret Whiting did a very lovely thing called Moonlight in Vermont. And, of course, then this big noise was a thing that, well, many bands, but Bob Crosby and Bobby Haggard and a host of others. Yes, I think, uh, Father, that we should mention uh, the drummer concerned, uh, whom I consider to be, even to this day, the foremost exponent of Dixieland drums that the world has ever known, Ray Baduke of New Orleans. All right, then I won't ask them because I'm quite sure they know them. But uh, one, of the things, <laughs> one of the things I was going to check out, and you know, I think a lot of us listening and seeing, you know, I've seen drums performed and drummers perform. We talk about timekeepers now. Mm. Would you just give them a little bit of a hint what this means in a, in a not too technical a sense, but, mm -hmm. you know, timekeeping what? Just steady beat, straight beat, hard beat? Well, uh, a steady beat, first and foremost, but also a beat that pulsates. Now you see, uh, Father, I was trained uh, to play dance drums. And even to this day, in the wildest solo that I could possibly perform, if I felt that the beat weren't there and people couldn't dance to it, I'd feel that I were failing in the solo. So that even if, even as dramatic or as showmany as you might get, time must still be there. Time must be always there. Right. Do you think young drummers today are still trying to do this sort of thing? Well, uh, uh, perhaps uh, some of them haven't got to that point yet, but the guys that uh, have matured a little bit certainly realize it. How about the sense of trying to do more with drums and playing out of time, for instance, and out of tempo? Well, uh... Using it like a virtuoso instrument against... Mm -hmm. they say rhythm. I could, uh, I could see merit in that. I, I mean to say there are drummers that do play in that vein, and uh -huh. I respect them very much. And, uh, of course, it's just another way that you feel about drums. When you, when, if we were to apply standards, though, to drumming, Gene, now, for instance, listening to you or to listening to another drummer coming along, what would be some of the things that we should look for in a critical way? Apart from time, but then other things. Well, if he does, if he's too busy, is that a... Is that he a could be too busy, and he could worry too much about what he's going to play or not going to play. And uh, he could be too stiff. He could worry too much about his technique. Uh... He could be a great technician, on the other hand, and perhaps not project enough, not get it across, across to the, the audience. audience. What mm -hmm. about long drum solos that we have heard over years? You mm -hmm. know, Prince, I remember Belson used to do a thing with Duke yes. that ran about eight or ten minutes. Well, now uh, there's a guy that can handle uh, a long drum solo, you see. But I've always felt this way about a solo. If I'm taking a solo and I, I watch my audience very, very closely, and if I feel that they're getting a little restless or something like that, I say to myself, well, old man, even the super chief stops once in a while, so I just uh, go into the ensemble again, you see. How about some of the people who influenced you, you know? Oh, I, my goodness, many, many of them. Uh, first of all, I come out of Chicago, and my idols in Chicago were uh, Baby Dots, and of course, Zooty Singleton, Davy Tuff, George Wetling, Tubby Hall. And then, of course, I think uh, the man who had the greatest influence on my drumming when I came to New York at the Savoy Ballroom and heard the great Chick Webb. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Of course. Uh -huh. See, that's, unfortunately, they're only about <laughs> four or five years old. <laughs> and therefore, these names will be all names that don't... But I imagine, like, their parents and many, many of the audience would, you know, like the name of Chick Webb, for instance, oh. would be uh, a, a little man. He was a hunchback of a man. And Elvis man. Gerald actually took over his band and led it when he died. That's right. But uh, I was thinking, like, Dodd's the same way. There's a famous name that has kind of passed out of the drumming history, and unfortunately, we've kind of forgot him. But you'd be surprised, Father. Now, you can... Uh, I can remember some of the things that Baby Dodds used to do, and you could even take a, an extreme a modernist like Joe Morello, and y you'd be surprised how, how some of the things tie in. Some of the things that Baby Dodds did, Joe Morello is doing right today in a different way, with a different flavor, of course. Right, Joe. Yeah. Well, like some of the younger drummers, I was thinking, like of Alvin Jones or yes, Tony Williams, course, people like sure. this. Who, mm -hmm. You remember a guy by the name of Powell? Was there a Powell? That yes, a uh, great uh, 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 Jack Powell. Jack Powell's a great yeah, show Yeah, he did. Uh, he did. They say, I don't know how much truth there is, uh, but he was a single in vaudeville, and they say that uh, um, yeah, he was the highest-paid drummer in the world until Benny Goodman decided to give me a raise. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually happened? <laughs> so, uh, what was the first recording that you made, Gene? Uh, the first recording I made was with a group called Mackenzies and Condon Chicagoans. And this had to be made 
uh, about 1927. Now, the personnel of that band, Jimmy McPartland, uh, Frank Teschmacher clarinet, Bud Freeman saxophone, Joe Sullivan piano, Jimmy Lanigan bass, Eddie Condon pork chop. You know, one of the things about this guy is, is that, first of all, he remembers all the names of all the records he's ever made. And also, I bet if, he could, if we asked him for the tempo, he probably could give the tempo of the two. Remember, well, pretty, remember the sides? Pretty, yes, I could say uh, uh, these four sides were uh, Sugar, uh, China Boy, Liza, and Nobody's Sweetheart Now. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eugene, we have to send you back to work. Okay. And, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, First of all, getting the kids to see it today and then realizing the depths of the performance and uh, the background. This is what makes it so great. Uh -huh. So you get back in those drums. All right. May I say, Father? It's no, you may not. Uh, delight <laughs> being with you on the show. No, now we're going to do a tune which uh, Duke Ellington made famous and another name that you don't remember because you're all so bad. It's <laughs> name of, uh, by the name of Herb Jeffries, and it's a lovely thing called Caravan. Gene? <laughs>
you can see why Dane Cooper put jazz drumming on the musical map in the swing era. He remains a vital figure in our own time, and the reasons are all very obvious. A serious musician, a perfectionist who knows his instrument and keeps working at it. And of course, still Gene Krupa, the ace drummer man. So, Gene, it's been wonderful. A little going away music now. Sweet George Brown. Gene. <laughs> Roy Eldridge, Suit Sims, Tyree Glenn, Mel Lewis, Milt Hinton, Bill McKell, Mo Kaufman, and jazz singer Jane Harvey. Ladies and gentlemen, Lionel Hampton. Right. Go. 